the gushing flow of river water, widespread tea plantations, dense semi-evergreen forests, varied and rare species of birds all around. Amazing wildlife in the forests is a sign that one is in Assam. Assam is one of the northeastern states of India. The massive Brahmaputra River crosses this state and on the banks of this river and its tributaries are huge forest lands, many of them now declared as national parks or sanctuaries. It has everything to support a wide range of flora and fauna. Huge forest covers vast open lands, riverine grasslands, ample water across the year and varied yet favourable climate. It supports a large number of local and migratory birds as well. Most importantly, this state conserves a huge variety of endangered and threatened species of mammals. The day begins in the forest of Assam. A small family of hog deer has come out to graze. This deer, unlike others of its type, loves to be in solitude or at the most in small groups. This endangered mammal is more active during dawn and dusk time. The forests here give them more than sufficient variety of grasses to feed on. For the grey-headed fishing eagle, territory guarding was on the top priority list in the morning. Perched on a tall tree to gain a clear view of its territory, it gave out ownership call to the one on the other end. With the warmth of the sun getting a little better, the Bengal monitor lizard came out for a bask. Taking up the opportunity of sunlight, the flying jewels, the butterflies gain their working temperature and seem to beautify the forest. With the temperature rising a little, the largest animal of this forest was drawn towards the water body. These huge stretches of forest land and protected areas provide one of the last wild habitats for this endangered Asian elephant. Though living in groups, the male once grown up may be separated. This tusker was seen moving around in search of a fit area to have a soothing mud bath. The sight of this tusker made one of the filthy makanas to move to the other end of the forest to avoid trouble. The male elephants that do not have the tusks are called as makanas. Rarely, there may be a group of male elephants staying together since mostly the grown-up male would be seen to be solitary.
Moving in search of the area of his choice, he was polishing his massive tusks on the way. Finally, he found the water body that met his expectations. Using the amazing gift of nature, the trunk, he took a nice bath. The wet mud creates a layer preventing troublesome insects at the same time giving a cooling effect to the body. The same technique is used by the second largest mammal of the forest, the one-horned rhinoceros. Here, the elephant grass provided a closed canopy for their relaxing mud bath. The rhinos have folds in their skin that retain the water even after coming out from it. These two had a satisfactory bath and then went into the interiors for grazing. In the deeper areas of the forest, a pair of flameback woodpeckers were engaged in search for a nesting place. Suddenly, the forest was filled with strange calls. They were the territorial calls of the hillock gibbon. Hillock gibbons are the only apes dwelling in India. These western hillocks are one of the two types of hillock gibbons found in the northeast India. These endangered species are largely territorial. There are less than 5,000 of these left in the world. This female and her kid were feasting on the fruits of their choice. The grown-up male of this family too was having breakfast on a nearby tree. Due to their territorial nature, even if there is food scarcity within their territory, they do not intrude in the area of another family of gibbons, making them more prone to extinction. To mark the territorial boundary, they sing once in a few days. After a short break for food, this gibbon family began with their song. Sharp beginning notes <coughs> by the rest of the sequence. After the call, they resume their routine. The long arms, almost double in length than their legs, make them amazing gymnasts. This young gibbon was getting playful with its mother. mother too responded to the mood.
On the other end, very near to the previous Gibbon family, was seen another female with her small one. The female was having a nice sunbath, spreading her arms and legs. At such heights on the trees, they are quite comfortable due to their body structure. The small one suckled and then moved on and had some fruits. The second family too gave out the territory call and then all of them went into the deeper areas of the forest to rest. Food is not scarce in these forests of Assam. In the morning time, the huge rhinos are often seen moving around and eating grass. Rhinos are known to follow regular specific paths. This family of rhinos was seen grazing in an open area. Though having a solitary nature, many may be seen coming on the same grassland area or near water bodies without disturbing each other. Rhinos mostly graze in the morning and evening time. The baby rhino was suckling. It stayed close to the mother rhino to avoid unwanted threats. Rhinos have another specialty. They defecate in the same place every time. This leads to pile of dung. Some flowering plants like these are seen to grow only where there is rhino dung. After a long graze, the rhino felt the need for a nice cool drink that led it to the water body. A little further was a rarely seen ibis billbird on the lookout for food. This bird is seen near shallow and flowing water. The roof-backed turtles had come out for basking in the morning sunlight. Turtles need to dry their backs for their regular metabolism. This turtle was attempting to come on top of the tree log already occupied by another. It was almost trying to pull it into water but without success. Basking in the sun is important to prevent harmful fungus building on them. In the adjoining pond, the otter was making continuous attempts to catch fish. Otters have an amazing ability to swim underwater. The black-necked stork too was trying out its fishing skills. This group of elephants was having a cool, soothing play in the water. This young tusker seemed to be reluctant to get out of the water. So its companion was trying to push it out. However, it was difficult for the young tusker to resist the temptation of another dip and it jumped backwards. Finally, since all the rest from the group had decided to move further, it had no choice but to follow them. In the riverine area of the forest, these arguably beautiful monkeys of India, the golden langurs, were busy with their morning activity. Another endangered species, these are found interestingly in no other region worldwide except for Assam in India and very few areas of Bhutan. As the sun soared in the sky, the heat in the open area made these monkeys 
move to a better shaded tree. With long jumps, taking turns, these went on to the nearby shady tree. With stomach full and a cool shaded area, they preferred to take a nice nap on tree branches. Some that were not sleepy carried on with the activity of cleaning each other but in the same shaded area whereas others went into deep sleep. The monitor lizard too probably sensed the heat and decided to get back into its burrow. On one of the tall trees nearby, there was an adjutant stork with its two small ones. It was trying to create a shade for them with its wings spread out. In spite of the rising heat, some other creatures were still quite active. The sun did not matter a bit to these bar-headed geese. They kept feeding near the water body. These geese are considered to be one of the highest flying birds crossing over the world's highest mountains, the Himalayas. The juvenile of the serpent eagle too was perched on the tree in anticipation of a kill. On the open lands, the large, black and robust wild buffaloes, the endangered mammals were still grazing. The male of this species is huge and has large horns. The female is a bit smaller in size and has smaller horns than the male. This creature is considered to be very dangerous to encounter. The largest of their world population is found here in Assam. This water-loving animal is often seen wallowing as the heat rises. These are mostly seen in herds, allowing the young to be supervised and protected. Late risers by nature, these arboreal capped langurs were busy in finding food. The small ones were very active and distracting the attention of the adults. Most of the day is spent by them in eating fruits, flowers and leaves. 60% of the diet of these species is composed of leaves. They are rarely seen on the ground. On the other hand, the stumped-tailed macaques are extremely terrestrial. Being very heavy, they are seen on ground more than on trees. Their face is reddish pink that turns darker with age. These macaques were feeding on roots. With its strength, this male macaque pulled out a big plant, removed its upper part and ate the roots. All others were also busy with the same activity. There were a couple of young ones too who were naughtily moving around and playing. The mother macaque was keeping a watch on them as well as surroundings for any threat. These stump-tailed macaques emit fetid odor to keep away the predators. Dwelling more on ground, these monkeys stay under shades of large trees, helping them remain active for almost the entire day. 
Since they are the heaviest macaques, these need to keep feeding on for a long duration. In the same manner, the elephants being the heaviest mammal of the forest need to keep feeding for long durations to sustain their body. Therefore, they sleep less and move around more. They also keep moving from one forest area to another eating food on the way. They return to the same area of the forest after a long cyclical duration. Elephants also need to drink at least once in a day and also are fond of water showers. At the same time, taking mud baths after the shower saves them from insects. The second largest mammal of the forest, the one-horned rhino, is often seen napping in the afternoon in the grasslands. Some may also prefer to wallow at that time of the day. The rhino skin has number of folds. These increase the surface area and help it regulate body temperature. Though the skin is thick, it does not protect the rhino from blood-sucking flies, leeches and ticks. Hence, it is often seen allowing the mina and egret birds to help it in controlling these disturbing creatures. The afternoon time is a busy period for the diurnal, beautiful Malayan giant squirrel. It is an arboreal creature very rarely seen on ground. These have an amazing thick deep brown coat and buff coloured belly. This full grown squirrel was seen to be feeding upon the tender shoots of the tree. The, the squirrel has a great skill of making confident and huge leaps from branch to branch in very high canopy. A hoary-bellied squirrel was just in the adjoining area. When it tried to intrude in this giant squirrel's territory, it was chased away. This squirrel often has one or two litters or young ones. When they grow up sufficient enough to take care of themselves, they are not allowed to stay in the same territory. Just like these two young squirrels were moving around in the nearby area. They both were in a very playful mood, one following the other. When these sense danger, they are seen to flatten their body on the branch and do not move a bit till the possible threat is gone. Search for food makes these endangered Malayan giant squirrels move continuously in high canopy. In the nearby area, full of tall trees, were seen the great hornbills in flight. Most of these hornbills have a fixed location of nesting and they keep coming there for frequent checks, even though it's not nesting time. This female was also seen surveying her nesting area. Near the water hole was a male wild boar moving around undertaking the regular survey of its territory. The swamp-like area in the forest also attracts birds like the northern lapwing. Also, the bronze-backed jacana was seen feeding on insects that were plenty on the water hyacinth and other such water plants. 
These insects also attract birds like the chestnut-headed bee-eater that have no worry of food in such areas. As the sun went down a little on this forest, the ones that were lazed out due to heat started gaining back their tempo for activity. The laced out golden langurs seem to be as hungry as before taking the nap and so started feeding back on the fruits on the adjacent tree. The Tusker elephant here was busy still grazing near the water area. A female elephant was seen near the water body. She came a little further, seemingly to take a mud bath to get rid of the troubling insects. She gave out a call. From the bushes was heard another elephant call. She called them back once again. And they were spotted a cute little one. The baby elephant came towards its mother. Another young elephant was also sighted coming there on the response to her call. She did not want them to go beyond her sight since this was the time when the threat to her kids would be quite active. The threat was from the dangerous yet beautiful carnivore of this forest, the tiger. Tigers are more active during the night. This mother had a plan to go to the other end of the jungle along with her small ones to catch up with the group that had moved on to the other side. She went halfway and stopped trying to gather sound and understand what was happening on the other end. Suddenly, on the other side of the forest, there was a herd of deer that fled. A sambar deer gave the alarm call and ran away. This was the signal that the tiger was near. There it emerged and was taking a walk. This was probably sensed by the mother elephant. She gave an alarm call to her kids. The small one that had come all the way across the swampy area with effort now had to return in a hurry. Though the small one was sent away in the interior and more protected area, her worry did not end. The group had dispersed, 
so it was important to get them all back if she could not go to the other end. So the option was nothing but calling out to them. In response, a call came from the thicket on the other end. And there, one of her troop member emerged to join back. The tusker now came forward to fulfill his job. He stood halfway to receive the members. Elephants normally use touch and tapping as if to greet the troop members. When they came near, he greeted one of the members. After the first, another followed the same path. The tusker seemed to be aroused and was tackling if any of the females was ready to respond. But it didn't turn out to his favour. Taking opportunity of the movement and alarmed, two females with their little ones belonging to the other group came that way. When they saw the tusker, they seemed to be a little scared. And hence to avoid any encounter, ran away quickly. On the nearby tree, were seen a number of great cormorant birds roosting and getting ready for the night. The male of the Kalish pheasant and two females were busy in search for food. These birds loved to be in the bushy and thick areas. However, this group seemed to be exploring the open area, probably to search for the food they like. In some regions of the world, these are called as invasive species since they spread the seeds of invasive plants and cause problems to the forest. With the activity of the insects increasing the nocturnal arachnid, the signature spider was engrossed in the catching of prey and having a nice meal. The rhinos, after the nice afternoon nap, now became energetic again. To gather further energy, they were again seen grazing in large numbers near the water body. One of the male rhino did not like the presence of another in his area and so ran behind it. Rhinos are good runners and can catch up with a speed of around 55 miles per hour for a short period. This rhino was busy chasing the other for some time. The other surrendered and went into the water body to avoid further interaction. Satisfied with this victory, the dominant rhino went away to graze, however, at the same time was watchful over the one sitting in the water. Sensing that he was being watched, the rhino did not dare to come out. It waited for a while and seeing no chance of getting out, it decided to use the time for another cool dip. When finally it got a chance, it came out of the water hole. It seemed that it had hurt itself in the fight and was now limping. These fights may become a factor of threat to the rhino. However, the main reason 
that is vulnerable is because of its horn that fascinates humans to such an extent that it is killed ruthlessly for it. The horn of the rhino is a real wonder made of the material keratin. This horn keeps growing for the lifetime of this animal. The males have larger horns than the females. This spectacular feature of the wild beauty has created problems for its survival. Assam, however, is taking care of these and other threatened creatures in its lap. These threatened mammals and others are now quite secure in their wild home and are growing in better numbers, which gives us hopes that one day these can be seen in much better counts than what they are today.